Hey guys, and welcome to my dark academia activity video. Um, so I just did a light academia video, and the whole idea behind these is just kind of embracing the season, embracing the weather, being cozy, just enjoying the beauty that God has put around us. And autumn is such a short season here where I live that I like feel like I gotta do all the things right now. So over the next few days, I'm gonna be doing some dark academia type activities. It's a, it's a little loose what that even means, but I thought I would take you along. Obviously the first thing we have to do is find a read. And I know one that I'm gonna be starting, um, but I might pull out another one. So we will head to my October TBR shelf here and I'll grab the one that I know I'm reading and see if there's like another one that I wanna read because usually I'm reading a couple books at a time. Uh, yeah, let's just grab the book. Okay, so I grabbed two books off my shelf. The first one being Babel because I'm going to be buddy reading this with one of my patrons. So every month I pick a patron of the month. They get to choose a book for me to read and they have the choice to buddy read it with me. This is the only buddy reading that I do. People often ask if we can read buddy read books, but I'm not good at it. I can make myself do it for one book a month and that's about where my enjoyment level stops. If I have to buddy read more books than that, I end up not enjoying my reading. I don't know much about Babel. I know that it's set in 1828 in Oxford and it has something to do with languages and magic around languages. From what I've heard, this is people's most disappointing book. Last year at the end of the year, a lot of popular booktubers had this on their favorites list and then I think everyone picked it up and then everyone was disappointed because they went in with super high expectations. So I'm hoping to lower my expectations for this book and maybe enjoy it then. Um, it's quite long, it's like 550-ish pages. So I'm going to be reading this and then I wanted to pick up another one. And I'm, I don't know, I may or may not read them, like alternate depending how much I'm enjoying this or how fast I want to go through it. The other one I want to read is Lay Your Body Down. I think this is a kind of a, it's a novel of suspense, I think it says underneath my library sticker. And it has to do with a young woman who returns to her rural Minnesota hometown where a radical evangelical pastor has poisoned everyone's minds and may be covering up a murder. So this just feels like a kind of suspenseful, fast read. And if this ends up being boring or something, maybe I'll want to switch it up. So these will probably be my main reads in the next couple days. And obviously, in addition to doing some reading, I'm gonna be doing some other dark academia activities. So let's get going. good day to start this video because it is cold. I made myself like a cup of hot cocoa now. I'm chilled and I haven't even left the house yet. Uh, so I read one chapter in Babel thus far, making me not very far into it yet, but I thought I would share what it's about for those who haven't read it. Um, st I was just talking to Jared about it. He still thinks I'm not going to like it, but one chapter in, I don't really have like a say as to what I think or not. So we start out in China and our main character is a young boy. I don't know if we know an age yet. And he has, his whole family neighborhood has been wiped out by some kind of disease that has been uh, carried over from different countries. And as he's kind of like lying, dying on his bed, this Englishman leans over his bed, like comes to his house, leans over his bed and 
does something to him, like something magical that I don't understand with some kind of contraption. And this man tells him he, this boy, can come with him on a ship to England and he will train him and educate him, etc. And so the boy's name, we learn that his English name, he got from a book of nursery rhymes or rhymes and his name is Robin. Originally I was like, oh, like Robin Hood, but no, it's from Cock Robin. Uh, so that's, I feel like maybe a little bit of foreshadowing there because the Cock Robin nursery rhyme is who killed Cock Robin, who saw him die. And then he goes by Swift uh, from Gulliver's Travels. He takes the last name Swift. Uh, so yeah, they're on a boat. They have now spotted England at, or London at the end of chapter one here. So yeah, page 18. Not a lot to say, but I wanted to give a little bit of a rundown. So I will read more of this yet. We are having company tonight for my daughter's birthday. She turns 13 on Monday. Still can't really believe that. So I have some preparations to do for that. I'm also going to be editing a video. That's my next thing I need to edit a video for the next Monday here. So I'm gonna work on a little bit of that. Neither of those things are very dark academia-esque, but the weather outside is. And so I'll go with that for now and do some more dark academia activities in a bit. Sunday. It is raining and overcast and it's supposed to be raining all day. I've got hot cocoa here. This morning we had church and let me say I love gathering with the church. I love meeting new people that come, talking to old people. And by old people I don't mean just elderly people. Um, I love it but as an introvert it like drains my battery so that by this point on Sunday I just want to curl up in a ball and do introverted things. Thankfully, we have no plans for the day, so I can do that. My plans are to do some reading, so I thought I would do an update. I started Lay Your Body Down yesterday. I got up to chapter five, which is only page 20, which goes into one of the benefits of this book, and it that's that it has short chapters. I think thrillers and suspense books should always have short chapters because you, that just helps you turn the pages faster. It makes the whole thing go faster and it just feels more like a bit of a wild ride, which is what you want for this. Um, although, that being said, because it's only 20 pages, not much has happened yet. Um, we start out pretty much, there is like one perspective are these, I think they're blog posts that are being published in 2011. They're by some teenage girl that's talking about how their pastor is teaching them how to be like pure women and yeah, there's definitely some red flags like right off the first blog post, definitely showing how people can take scripture and twist it to make things go well. Um, I wish chapter two would have been chapter one because this would have been like such a good first sentence for a book because I often like to read the first sentence in videos and first sentences can be really gripping. The first sentence of chapter two is I'm going to kill my boyfriend. Now that's gripping. It turns out that actually he's just late to a supper thing. And so then this character, I think her name is Delilah, um, she is having supper with her boyfriend and he, there's like some definite emotional abuse going on. He's 
not a nice guy. He ends up breaking up with her and kind of like making it, yeah, he just, he twists everything. He, br he breaks up with her in chapter two and she finds out that her first boyfriend, previous boyfriend, whatever it was, like the true love of her life has died. She found out via Facebook and she found out that she's, uh, her roommate is pretty much kicking her out of the apartment because her roommate's boyfriend is moving in. So like, Lots of bad things are happening to this lady or this young woman in the first chapter, which is just one evening of her life. Yeah, so we find out that the ex-boyfriend, whatever he was, we don't have much of a background yet, much information. He uh, was shot in a hunting accident. And so because I know this is a suspense book, I feel like there's some red flags coming here. So I don't have a whole lot to say yet. It's definitely interesting, gripping. I will probably go through this fairly quickly if I'm not also reading a million other books, which I currently am. Babel, I read a few more pages. The problem with this is, yeah, like I'm a decent of the way through chapter two, 10 pages into chapter two. The problem with this book is that people have told me that I'm not going to like it or they think I'm not going to like it. So I keep looking for the, the, the thing or like whatever it is that, is that why people think I'm not gonna like it or? whatever um over analyzing probably i'm not disliking it i'm still so early that i feel like i'm not invested in the story yet but it could happen yeah we're following robin as he starts getting tutors and learning different languages that's really all that's happened in those 10 pages so there's that so i'm going to be doing some reading i saw that there are a few videos uh, youtubers that i watch that have new videos and one of them is Ruby Granger's Oxford Move In video which I feel like while reading Babel and having a dark academia weekend like um hello this sweater I found at the thrift store the other day is perfect um this that that video Oxford fits in perfectly since that's where this is supposed to take place but we're not at Oxford yet so definitely gonna watch that and just chill Fill that introverted battery back up and then hopefully not forget to pick up a kid that I need to pick up in a few hours. I'm enjoying both of these books, but I always find the first parts of books are the hardest. It takes a while to get to know where you are in a story. And because I've started quite a few in the last few days, I haven't like loved any of my reading. So I need to kind of commit to a book and just dive in, but I can't decide which one. So I'm gonna keep going between these two. we have to do some kind of like academia studying of something right for a dark academia weekend or whatever this is yeah this one's actually a weekend um and i'm not really like into dark topics uh as much as i like the vibe of dark academia because it's dark and cozy but i am one of my goals for this year was to study revelation and i finally starting that. I'm a little ways into it. I have two main resources I'm using. Like I think probably a lot of my generation, I it took me a long time, like it wasn't that long ago, since I realized that Revelation is not... the idea of what is all in Revelation is not what the Left Behind books say. I had no idea that there was other viewpoints on the end times and uh, I had no idea that the whole left behind theology was actually a very small portion of the population that actually believes that and that it's a new, rather new belief. And yeah, so that was like all a bit of a light bulb moment for me. So I'm studying Revelation. I have two resources that I'm using. One is an old sermon series that my church did in 2012 before I was even attending there. Um, if you guys are interested, I can leave the series linked below. So I'm starting, you know, at the beginning of Revelation. And so that will take me a while. They like go through the entire book, only a few chapter, or a few verses at a time. So it's gonna be a bit. Um, and then I recently purchased the ebook and printed out the ebook um, by Felicia Masonheimer, 
All Nations, Tribes, People, and Tongues, Exploring the Hope of Christ Revelation Study. And it was like 197 pages. So I uh, used an online website to um, put, put it to two pages per page, and then I printed it double-sided, so I saved a lot of paper that way. Um, I'm going through this, and she doesn't... I appreciate her study and her... Um, I read her Every Woman a Theologian, and I like her podcast because she doesn't really tell you like what to believe. She just kind of gives information and lets you dig and figure out what things really mean. Um, so I'm very... I'm not very far. I did the introduction to this. The summary of eschatologic, eschatological okay, um, views. Yes, I've got this. So I haven't even started Revelation 1 in here. I started, it was Revelation 1 verses 1 through 7, I think was the first sermon that I listened to and took notes on. I have a Notion document for this as well. And so that's the bit of studying I'm going to be doing. I've been trying to, well, the last like two Sundays, I've been trying to work on setting some time, setting aside some time to go through my study of Revelation. So I'm going to do a bit of that yet today. And then also right when I got home from church, I had a book order that came in and there's mostly stuff in there for our homeschool, I think, but I thought I'd open it because I know at least one of them is a fantasy book, which you know, feels very dark academia, and I don't remember what else there was, so I'm gonna open it quickly. It's one of the large boxes, which is exciting, but they're so bad to open. Well, maybe this one will actually work the whole way through. These always fall apart, except apparently this time. Okay, um, yeah, I think it's mostly homeschool stuff, but I got two books for myself. The first one is Six Crimson Cranes. This one has been on my radar for a while. Um, I've heard good things and I know Sam from the Book Bunch just did a video on like Asian fiction. I think it was, no, it wasn't all fiction. There was some nonfiction too, but Asian literature. And oddly, I like read almost most of those books, which I don't feel like I've read a lot of Asian literature. Uh, but this, this was one she recommended. It is a duology and Book Outlet has book two. But when I saw it, they didn't have it in paperback. And I'm really realizing how much I like paperbacks. I kind of don't even want to buy new books because I don't like reading from a hardcover. I like paperbacks, especially if they're floppy. This one's, this one's great. Uh, so I don't know anything other than it is Asian fantasy. Then this one, honestly, I know I looked it up, but I don't remember anything about it. This is The Light Between Worlds. They thought their story had ended. It had only just begun. I'm pretty sure, like, I've been pretty good with, like, stuff that I'm buying if I've, I either have a recommendation from someone that I know and trust, or I look on Goodreads to see what my friends have rated the book, if they've read it, and I don't remember if someone recommended this one, or if I looked on Goodreads, somehow I got it, so obviously someone that I trust somewhere enjoyed it. I don't know anything about what it is. They told us, a woodland's heart always finds his way home but how do you find your way if your heart is torn in two yeah honestly no idea it's um harper teen so um ya fantasy was this one ya or is this one i don't know if this one's ya or adult it doesn't really matter they can both be good um so two fantasy books in that little haul i really need to do like an official book haul video soon because I'm acquiring books bit by bit and the stacks are getting larger. So those are exciting. I'm probably gonna go do my revelation study or watch a video now, but man, the thing about getting new books is I just like wanna start them. I've got other books to read first. If you guys have read either of these, let me know, especially this one, like I've heard, I know Sam liked this one, so I can trust her opinion. And I think she finished the duology as well. But this one, where did I hear about it? I don't know.
good morning. I've already been outside in the rain. I did my hair, then wore a toque, went outside in the rain. It's a chilly, rainy day. We're continuing this vibe. It's great. I am wearing the same shirt I wore like two days ago because I don't really own that many dark shirts and this is the one I wanna wear. Today is my daughter's 13th birthday. And what we do in our house is if it's your birthday, you get to choose the meals for the day and you pretty much get to choose what you do for the day. So she's gonna be dictating my day. Uh, thankfully, she has good taste, so it will be good. Um, we'll be starting out by watching Cool Runnings, which maybe is a little bit colder weather than what we currently are experiencing, but that'll be fun. I wanted to give a little babble update. I'm not, still not like super far. I'm on page 60, which is the middle of, the chapters are quite long. I think this is chapter three. Yeah, so we're still in the middle of chapter three. Funnily enough, they did an Oxford move-in. Our main character, Robin, has moved into Oxford and I read that like shortly after watching Ru Ruby Granger's Oxford move-in, so that felt very fitting. So far, I'm not loving the book. Normally, fantasy, I feel like it takes 100 pages to get into. As of right now, I would say it's a little bland. The idea is good. Um, I mean, I still don't even really know any of the actual magic other than there's like silver is magical, makes things go faster and things, but like the language aspect of things, I don't, haven't been introduced to that at all. Uh, but there's like, I like humor in books, even fantasy. I like it to be infused with a bit of humor and it's not yet. Maybe, maybe it will be, but that's some thoughts on that. I don't think I'll really share any more thoughts. I feel like after page 60 here, it's a little bit more spoilery than, I, I don't like to give too much information going into books because I don't like to know too much. So I won't talk more specifics about the book. Not that that was very specific. Um, yeah, so welcome to another Dark Academia Day. Today I know, um, well, I my plan, whether or not it actually happens, it should, is to go for a walk in the woods while it's raining or possibly in one of the lulls when it's not raining. So it feels like it's perfect for today. fully intended to keep reading Babel, but I left it downstairs and I was upstairs. So I decided to pick up Lay Your Body Down and read more of it and I might be getting sucked in. Okay, so our main character Delilah has been told that her ex-boyfriend who is now married to what used to be possibly her best friend um, has been shot in a hunting accident. But she goes to the funeral and his parents kind of like corner her and try to tell her or ask her, beg her really to get more details of what has happened because the church that he attended, that she used to attend, 
um, is kind of taking over the town and they're hiding things and they like the sheriff is part of the church like everyone everyone is a part of the church pretty much um, and they're not telling them like the guy's parents who accidentally shot him like things are really suspicious and it's like creepy but not like creepy like a normal thriller but like a different kind of creepy and it's it's very fascinating i've i didn't even want to come down here and update but i'm at like page 50 ish here now so that's kind of my like i feel like it's not a spoiler so i wanted to say things before i get too far because i have a feeling i'm just gonna get sucked in and keep going um as of right now very interesting so i should probably do some other dark academia activities yet but I think for the next little bit, it's just going to be reading. I did go on a walk. We went and went and got Starbucks and went book shopping and had lunch and watched Cool Runnings. Uh, so that's what my daughter has chosen to do. Now she's doing some alone time stuff and I'm going to read and see what else I get up to. See if I can pull myself away from the book enough to do other things. I feel like it could go either way. <laughs> This entire book. Um, I really enjoyed it. It comes with all the trigger warnings. Um, yeah, only read it. I mean, it's not, the trigger warnings aren't graphic, but there, there's a lot of messed stuff, messed up stuff going on in this church. And so I don't want just anyone to pick it up because I said it was good but it was very well done. I really enjoyed it. It, meh, there's a lot of messed up stuff going on. So like, enjoyed it. I think, I think it was well done. I maybe have hesitations on the ending. Not really a fan of that. I'm still actually a little confused on the ending, but overall I enjoyed it. It was a thriller that was not the kind of thriller, like I read it a lot last night before I went to bed. And if I'm reading like a creepy thriller, it will enter my dreams and I won't be able to sleep and I'll be creeped out. And it's not that kind of thriller. There was a quote in here where she's talking about like church girls don't do violence. They do like gossiping and like that kind of thing. And that's kind of like a lot of the undertones of this book. There is a little bit of violence as well, but not as much as you would normally expect in a thriller or suspense mainstream kind of book. Um, so I will end my dark academia vlog here. Um, I didn't get to all the dark academia, academia in general, activities over this video and my light academia one, but I kind of just keep planning to do regular videos like this, just, you know, trying to see the beauty around me, embrace the season, so there will be lots more time to do lots more activities, but if you have some, like, specific dark academia-esque type activities leave them in the comments i asked for the same thing in the light academia vlog and i just want to kind of gather all those activity ideas and maybe do them throughout these cooler months so thanks for hanging out with me guys <laughs>